Hey there, this is Christoph with Click. Today I would like to show you how we set up ClickSense on Kubernetes in a cloud environment. It's Azure AKS this time. And as an identity provider, I will choose Auth0 because they offer some free subscriptions. And then we will also use a production grade Mongo database. Mongo offers a cloud version called Atlas and we will use that. So let's get started. Okay, here on the right side, I'm logged into my Azure account. And on the left side, I'm using PowerShell to remote connect to my cluster using ASET. That's uh, Azure command line interface. Uh, if you don't have it, get it downloaded. Then you do ASET login and connect with your account. In case you have multiple subscriptions like I do, um, you may have to switch to the right uh, subscription. So I do AC account set subscription and provide the subscription ID. So all those commands, by the way, you can find on my GitHub where you can copy paste them like I do now here in this demo. So then let's enable AKS, uh, Azure Kubernetes services. So we have to register two components, the Microsoft.Container service, making sure it has been registered. And then we need Microsoft.Compute and also make sure that it is started or registered, which it is. Great. Next, let's create a resource group called RG dash Kubernetes. On the right side, we can see it's created and we'll assign all the AKS resources to this one. Let's see what versions of Kubernetes we can use. So a set AKS versions, and I'm typically not using the latest one. So I'm going back one or two minor versions. Um, I'll use 1.13.10 at this time. Here's the way to provide it in the command minus minus version. And here under node count, I'll go for two nodes, which is sufficient for a small test. So this command will take quite a while, something like 15 minutes or so. And, and you click on the portal and into CL, that's actually already our cluster. You can see many resources will come in here in the next minutes. So I'll fast forward this video and this is how the result will look like when it's done. So the container service is just running. Let's see. So here is another resource group that has been added called MC something. And when you look at all the resources that are now available, there are quite a lot of virtual machines, network components, disks, etc., etc. But there's one thing missing actually a storage account that uh, we will add next. And we do AC storage account create copy paste that uh, resource group we have just created and minus n plus an account name uh, you can choose freely um, well account one I used previously and two as well so let's uh, take a complete your name cube acc1 and this will within a few seconds create also a storage account Uh, there we go. So next we need to get kubectl. And for that purpose, let's first create a working directory somewhere in my documents. I call it qseokaks. And with that download link, invoke web request, or you can do this with the browser if you want. Uh, and providing the right link and the right Kubernetes version, I'm getting the matching kubectl command. This is about 50 max, so it can take some minutes until finished. And then we can do dot backslash kubectl and have that tool we will use in the next time a lot available. Make sure that you are connected to the right cluster. So config current context. If it's if you have multiple clusters, you can check with config get clusters, all the clusters you have and change it if it's not the right one. 
So let's see if it works and uh, let's get ourselves the number of nodes that we have. And it connects to the right cluster. It tells us the two nodes, which are the virtual machines in our Azure portal. These are the virtual machines we also see in the Azure portal. So now let's create a cluster role and a cluster role binding that's relevant for Azure Disk to support read write many. And then we also want to create a storage class in the new storage that we created. You can use the YAML file actually as a URL directly from my Git. So it's a kind storage class with the op with the command kubectl apply minus f. You can um, also apply this from the URL directly. So it says storage class created. Let's see the storage classes with kubectl get sc. There it is. There's Azure file now. The, it takes some mount options that you have to keep like this. So now let's get Helm. Helm actually um, just released in version 3, which I'm not going to use. I stick with the latest 2.14 version. Click on the right operating system. In my case for PowerShell, I'm downloading the Windows version. Then open this zip and copy paste Helm and um, Tiller into your working directory. So in my case, it's here. And then I have all the free commands I'll work with in my working directory. So if I do ls, you see Helm, kubectl and Tiller. And Helm, I need to call it actually with dot backslash Helm, otherwise it will tell me that Helm isn't a command. You can also change your Windows path if you want. So let's do Helm init upgrade. That initializes Helm for the first time and Tiller will be installed into the Kubernetes cluster. It needs Ethernet access, which I will allow here. So then we need to also assign um, a service account a certain right in the cube system. So um, service account tiller in the namespace cube system and also a cluster role binding. And again, you can use the URL directly from my Git when we do cube CTL apply now. And we provide this YAML file and the response is that the account and the binding has been created. Now we need to upgrade the service account tiller. And I keep forgetting that I need in my situation dot backslash helm. It confirms that tiller is now upgraded. It knows it's bound to the service account we created. And now we can do helm repo list. You see some repositories are already there, but not the click stable and the click edge repository because they are in a private repository click.bintray.com and you can add those using click repo add so a repository it always has the click sense and the click sense in it and if you want to see all versions you do minus minus version and you can see the edge release has quite a lot of charts there we, when we want to install, we do install minus n, give this a name, and we start with the init, the, in, the click sense dash init chart. I'm um, choosing the click edge repository in my exercise here. So this works quite fast. It only installs a custom resource definition. So we can check that kubectl get and CRD, which is short for custom resource definition, we get that one, engines.kixmanager. So the next thing we install is the click sense chart. So install minus n, click, and from the edge repository, you can do stable if you want, slash click sense. And now we need to actually provide a file 
and as a starting point you'll also find on my github link shown below this is a starting point you have to accept the EULA on the engine and um, def mode enabled true so those three lines it won't really work but it uh, is enough to start click sense so this will take quite some time so I'm fast forwarding here show you the results Helm lists all the objects that have been deployed now with the config maps deployment objects engines network policies pvcs of course the pods and all the pods are just starting to pull the docker images which they are based on then there are the secrets the services service accounts really a lot of objects have been deployed that's why it takes some time and now we need to also hold back until all the images are pulled so you can use you can keep calling kubectl get pods until all are running but it's also a good moment to uh, i show you something called the kubernetes dashboard and this is a web-based ui-based way to use to connect and to your cluster you have to actually set up again a cluster role and a cluster role binding an account and the binding so you can grab this from the url below kubectl create minus f and the url so with that cluster role we can go ahead and get the credentials we need uh, ac aks get credentials and then we do ac browse aks browse and this um, simulates a local web service that talks to your cluster so it gives you the url here localhost 8001 which i'm using here and now we can see the same thing as uh, for from the command line but in a more convenient way so you can click on the left to see the different object types and now we see uh, the same status as which have just started a few minutes ago most of the images are still pulling some of them are quite large but here are the nodes that we've just seen the roles and and everything so it's a convenient way to look at your cluster so make sure you give another 15 to 20 minutes until everything is there when all the pods are running this is a good point to stop video part number one we can find out the ip address by doing kubectl get services and look for the load balancer there you will see the external ip address when you put that into your browser actually you will get the following error message which basically says click is working but it doesn't have a configuration for the identity provider and that's just what we are about to do in the video part number two together with setting up a production mongodb so follow the link and see you there <laughs>